What you're looking at right now is a visual representation of a perfect shuffle with a very special amount of cards. And in this video I want to share with you some of these very pretty animations and talk a little bit about what's actually going on here. Imagine you have a deck of cards or a stack of poker chips that you split into two sets and then interlace with itself. What you've just done is what's known as an in-shuffle perfect shuffle. A very natural question to ask here is, how many in-shuffle perfect shuffles will it take for the chips to become re-separated again? That is, all of the blue chips on one side and the red chips on the other. To do this, we start by labeling the chips by their distance away from the ends of the total stack. We do this for reasons relating to the fact that we are only asking about when the chips will become re-separated again, and we don't really care if the red and the blue chips flip positions. When a shuffle happens, the chip's new position is split into two cases. If a chip's position times two is less than or equal to n, the number of chips in half the stack, then you just double the chip's position. If a chip's position times two is more than n, then the new position is n minus the position times two plus one. This might seem like a mouthful, but this just breaks down into the following piecewise equation, where x is the current position of the chip, and f of x is the new position of the chip. In the shuffling animation you just saw, n was equal to 5 since that was the number of chips in half the stack. So let's see what happens if our starting position is 1 and we let n equal 5. 2 times 1 is less than 5, so we just double the position and go to 2. 2 times 2 is less than 5, so we just go to 4. 2 times 4 is greater than 5, so we just take the difference of 4 and 5, double it, and add 1, which takes us to 3. Applying the same rule to 3 takes us to 5, and 5 to 1. Go back to the original animation of the chip shuffling earlier in the video, and check that this really is the order of the positions as we had them labeled. And this actually tells us something very important about the chips. It tells us that if we have two stacks of five chips and we start shuffling them, then no matter what position a given chip is in, they'll encounter every single position before returning back to their original position. And that means that in order for the chips to be re-separated again, they'll have to be shuffled five times. Numbers that have this property of encountering every number and then returning to their original position are known as canoe numbers, named after the mathematician Raymond Canoe. But these paths that chips take as they're shuffled from position to position can be very pretty even when the number of chips is not a canoe number. 20, for example, has two possible paths that chips can take depending on where they start, and each path contains 10 positions. What this means is that if you had a deck of cards or a stack of chips with 20 items and you started in shuffle perfect shuffling them, then after 10 iterations of that shuffle, all of the cards would be re-separated again. For numbers with multiple paths, the number of positions in each path doesn't have to be equal, and it often isn't. So for the rest of the video, I just want to show you some of my favorite animations that I've done of this, and you can just sit back and enjoy the visuals.